So uh, good, mor good morning, everybody. Uh, so uh, we will do this talk in three. So just to leave some space to the youngs that are really doing the, the job. Uh, so in reality, the story of this uh, refactoring of uh, a code that already exists, which is at N, uh, didn't come out just because we, we just needed an alternative to uh, string approaches. In reality, it borns uh, because uh, we are, uh, since a uh, few years, we are working on the development of um, atom resolved uh, of lattice kinetic Monte Carlo that we hope to have it on the fly uh, soon. And uh, for the development of this uh, code, uh, we needed, uh, on one hand, uh, improved uh, topological and shape matching techniques. In particular, uh, what we have now, it's uh, based on two steps. A step uh, for a first uh, row identification and hashing, which is based on the graph theory, graph isomorphism. And then a shape matching algorithm that has been developed by Mika Gunde, which will be one of the speakers, uh, that includes also a um, one-to-one -one assignment algorithm. Uh, so also in this context, we were working on the improvement on uh, rare, rare event search in particular in the modularity of the software that was already available, such as to be able to do it on the fly. And in parallel also, uh, the group is working on the improvement of semi-empirical potential and uh, atomistic neural networks. So the semi-empirical potentials are done by Nicolas Sal, and uh, the neural networks uh, is um, in the hand of uh, Stefano De Gironcoli and uh, Ruggero Lotto. So just to show you that uh, I'm not talking <laughs> that we, we really have something, right? So this is the, the diffusion of a silicon interstitial in silicon. The number of DFT calculations are four. So there are four irreducible events, irreducible by symmetry. And then with a the shape matching algor algorithm, you, you can unfold uh, these four uh, events and uh, they become 12. And this uh, diffusion is, uh, is non-trivial. There is not a single uh, barrier and there is a change in the symmetry along the, the path. So just to show you that this algorithm is really is uh, general, this is what we were working on. So this is another example, which is simply, uh, simply it's a gas uh, sensor in which you have CO that attach on, uh, on a surface. And this is performed with exactly the same code. So the inputs are just uh, the, the DFT events. So this is a bit uh, how the, the refactoring of, uh, of art uh, born and how this, uh, this plugin, uh, the history of the, of the plugin. So I don't know if you remember, the oldest probably remember, I remember, I did it in my PhD. Um, when uh, you want uh, to uh, have a reaction barrier, in the past, uh, what was uh, suggested and what was used uh, is what was called uh, the Bennett method or uh, the drug, which was simply to move by hand an atom along a kind of jump direction or reaction direction, and then performing a constrained relaxation with a perpendicular relaxation. Uh, sometimes these things were hard coded in the early versions of uh, some codes. Uh, other times it was uh, proposed uh, like an empty routine, uh, like it was the case uh, for Siesta 1.1, uh, which means uh, 20 years ago. Uh, it was uh, very efficient uh, in the sense that uh, you don't uh, use uh, computer time for nothing because you were seeing how the atom was relaxing. So you were by hand with the eyes changing the, the jump direction and, and the move. Of course, this means that it was absolutely not automatic. So it was extremely cumbersome to, to have a reaction barrier. So around the 20s, uh, the energy elastic band arrives. So it was fantastic, fantastic, <laughs> because that you needed an initial and the final state. But if the initial and final state was known, so it was relatively easily to uh, have something that was quite systematic without the need uh, of uh, uh, moving by hand the atoms and by figuring out some kind of uh, jump direction. The 
problem of uh, nudge elastic band if, uh, is that uh, you need intermediate points. And uh, it is indeed not trivial to figure out how many points you need uh, to converge with the accuracy that you, you want uh, a reaction path. Uh, it is also cumbersome for non-trivial maps, so in the sense that if you have more than one saddle point and you have to cut the, the story by, by hand, by parts uh, to, to identify, and it is not easy to integrate uh, uh, the elastic band in uh, searches or in high throughput, in particular if you, you don't know the, the final state, which is often what happens when you have something that is a little bit more complex than the diffusion of a defect in a crystal. So for instance, uh, if uh, you would like uh, to have uh, the reactions uh, during the interface grow, this is of course something that you cannot afford because as soon as you are uh, beyond the first layer, the number of possibilities to figuring out the final state uh, becomes, I mean, it's more than, it's a power role, you, you become crazy. Um, and it's true that also at that time, uh, Johnson developed uh, the dimer map, uh, for which in any case you need uh, two points and a spring. And this is a video from uh, the, the father of uh, art, uh, which uh, is that the dimer map seems to be a little bit more unstable, okay, but I don't, I cannot confirm it uh, numerically. In any case, both ART and uh, NEB and dimer NEB, uh, they were developed uh, at the same time, around the 20s. And there was a lot of exchanges between uh, the father of ART and uh, Johnson. And a point that was raised but, uh, by one of our collaborators that works uh, extensively in um, catalysis, and uh, he was indeed complaining about uh, the, the NEP, is that if uh, you have a crystal and the reaction is very simple, very often you almost know where the saddle point is. And despite you know where the saddle point is, uh, if uh, you want to do a, a NEP calculation, you in any case uh, need to put some uh, intermediate points. So somehow it's a little bit a uh, paradox because you do an expensive calculation for a gain that is, in terms of the physics that you, you gain, it's, uh, it's, it's low because you almost know where is the, the saddle point. So essentially the, the ART, which means activation relaxation technique, which I said was developed by uh, Norman Mousseau at the beginning of the, the 20s. So the idea, it's uh, very simple, is the idea of Bennett, in which you have a jump direction and you perform constrained perpendicular relaxation, with the advantage that the jump direction, you don't give it by hand um, at a certain point of the, of the calculation, but it's uh, an estimation of uh, the Hessian. So essentially the, the lowest uh, meaningful uh, eigenvector. So art uh, estimate uh, this uh, lowest meaningful eigenvector and perform uh, uh, perpendicular relaxations. One of the big advantages, of course, if you are almost know where is the saddle point, you can start a calculation almost uh, at the saddle point and then it converts, in principle, should converge fast. So this is a kind of small movie just to show you how is the, the working. So you start with a, a, a jump direction. And then you have the perpendicular relaxation, which you estimate uh, the, the smallest eigenvector of the Hessian, and you start uh, smoothly following the smaller eigenvector of the, of the Hessian. And then, of course, you converge to the southern point, and once you find the southern point, uh, then you just uh, push uh, and you find uh, the other minimum. So in the previous implementations of the activation relaxation techniques, uh, uh, conceptually in, 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 under the point of view of uh, software engineering, it was uh, art that was moving the atoms. So it was something from up to down. So art was moving the atoms and was calling from inside the energy and force engines. So this uh, art, uh, the code was called RN and it was uh, then interfaced with uh, LAMS. 
Another version of at N was implemented inside a, 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 of Lattice Kinetic Monte Carlo that is called uh, KART. There was another version of at N that was interfaced uh, with, uh, with FASP, quite uh, significantly heavy, uh, by the way. And then uh, two years ago, um, with our working group, uh, let's say, uh, Antoine J and Nicolas Sal, they implemented an, yet another version of that and uh, that was uh, interface uh, with uh, Quantum Espresso. And that was showing really very, very, very good performances. Let's say it was a kind of proof of concept that uh, the art N ideas uh, could be exploited in the initial context. And this was uh, thanks to the fact uh, that uh, they also constructed interfaces for reading and manipulating the density and the potential. And they were recycling the density and the potential for the calculations so of the number of uh, energy and force fall, and in particular, the number of uh, uh, SCF inside the SCF, you know, the number of, of loops has uh, significantly uh, reduced. And in addition, so they also uh, added these uh, several possibilities, like uh, the fact of starting from the middle, uh, of uh, constructing a connected path, uh, and all these things were hard coded uh, with uh, many, many um, calculations options. So, really hard coded. So, as you can see, one of the problems of having an, uh, a, a code that moved the ions and uh, called the engines. This, naturally, as you can say, see, makes uh, the, the portability very, very painful. So in a uh, few words, in the previous uh, implementation, so it was art uh, that was moving, so changing R, the atomic positions. They, they were calling Langso, so for estimating the smallest meaningful eigenvector instead of diagonalizing the whole nation, which is impossible. Uh, Art uses uh, Langsos that was in and out. So inside the Langsos, there was a call to the driver routines for the engine. And then it was also art that was performing the uh, constrained perpendicular relaxation, yet again calling the engine. So what we have uh, what we have done, and we hope that it will enhance the portability. Uh, so we have refactored uh, this, uh, the concept of art, uh, and uh, um, we have uh, done some improvements on some features of the, of the algorithm. Uh, so in particular, instead of uh, uh, having hard-coded many, many options that uh, in reality the kernel is not that uh, varied in the options, uh, we go back just to the fundamental. So in reality, what we need to have reaction pass uh, is uh, uh, a jump direction guess for starting. We have to be able to push along the, the algorithm. We have to evaluate the lowest eigenvector of the SCN as previously, and uh, then we have to follow this uh, uh, eigenvector of, uh, of the Hessian. And then once you converge to the southern point, uh, you just uh, need to push uh, to go back uh, to the next uh, minimum. So we concentrated on these uh, five uh, points uh, and uh, we reverted the whole algorithm a little bit like a, a SOC. So which means uh, that uh, is the energy and force engine that runs. The energy and force engine is convinced that she is uh, doing a normal relaxation and uh, the plugin acts as uh, external forces. Okay, this is a little bit delicate, of course, because uh, you have uh, to replace uh, the appropriate R with an appropriate F. So currently it works in, in this way. So the idea was like that. So the, the engine starts, calls its forces, then there is a call to this plugin art that takes the positions in uh, and the forces in and give back a force out. And according to which kind of move, so if we are just pushing or relaxing perpendicularly or computing 
the, the lowest eigen vector, these uh, forces, these external forces that uh, the we give back uh, are a little bit uh, different. And then is the enzyme that moves the atoms according to these appropriate external forces. So to be able to transform the R into F, we, we need to have a full control conceptually <laughs> on the, the relaxation algorithm. And uh, since now we have focused more on uh, fire, but uh, extensions to steepest descent of uh, the layer are also uh, easy integrable. And uh, we need, uh, in principle, uh, one just uh, interface routine. So with this kind of logic in which uh, the art only communicates with the engine through an external forces, we only need, in principle, one patch point. So the advantages of, uh, of this kind of, uh, of logic is that uh, the, the maintenance is significantly easy it's also easier to port because you don't have to concentrate on how the densities are written, how the potentials such that you are able to recycle these kind of things. You, you don't have to concentrate on the IO to construct a routine that writes an input. So it's a really easier to port. It's also in principle fully compatible with any improvement to the density, the Fourier transform or the engine parallelization, interpolation, anything as it enters just as an external force. Uh, in addition, on the side of uh, users, okay, this, uh, uh, it's uh, in principle, it should be more uh, adapted for a broad uh, adoption because the users are, have the impression that they are still using their favorite engine because you are running the engine telling the engine that is a relaxation and, and that's all. In addition, if uh, you are interfaced, uh, so you are ported to several uh, engines, uh, you can do the tutorials that are focused really on finding reaction path and not uh, how to use a specific engine. As it was previously, there is an art path, an art way, art lamps, which, uh, which makes the, the tutorials a bit uh, confusing also. And in addition, also always because it's only interacted with the engine through the external forces, it is fully compatible with any high throughput scripts or post-processing or, or pre-processing. Because in reality, the code that you run is the engine. So now we are interfaced with Quantum Espresso. We run PW as always. And uh, of course, uh, in a system for which uh, the saddle point uh, is uh, predictable at a glance, uh, you can directly place uh, your atom already close to the saddle point, uh, and uh, you just uh, need to refine uh, the position of, of the saddle point, and this is very, very fast. So uh, for the implementation details, uh, I leave uh, Michal Gunde that uh, made some uh, changes to the to the Lanxos. So hi everybody, I will like, briefly outline the Lanxos algorithm, uh, which is an iterative algorithm for obtaining the extreme eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. So in the single step of the iteration, basically what it, what it does is a matrix vector multiplication, then a generation of the vector that is gonna be multipli multiplicated with this matrix in the next step. And it diagonalizes a matrix that is um, a size smaller than the original matrix. Uh, very briefly, so the matrix vector multiplication is the. Um, I have a mouse. I don't have a mouse. Okay. Um, so the matrix vector multiplication, since we want to do the eigenvalues and eigenvector of the Hessian matrix, is the H times dr. We take the dr as a, as a one of the of the Lanchos vector. This represents the matrix vector multiplication. But since we know that this multiplication is a force uh, which we can compute and in fact we get it from the engine we can actually we take this as the matrix vector multiplication so we get we never actually compute the hessian um, the very first vector that we take for the lanchos procedure is a random normalized displacement this is on top of, on the right the v0 equal to dr0 and then the next vectors are generated with this uh, lanchos 
procedure that you see on the right on the middle. That is, each next vector is basically composed of um, this matrix vector multiplication, so in our case, the force. And then some other terms, which uh, essentially are due to making the next vector orthogonal to all the previous vectors. The last term, the sum, is just the um, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, which is only needed for making the algorithm numerically stable. And then the other two parts, the factors alpha and beta, are factors which make the next vector so alpha makes it orthogonal to the current vector, and the beta factor makes it orthogonal to the previous vector. And these two alpha and beta are important because they enter into the M matrix that you see on the left, which um, is a matrix that is progressively increasing with in size with each step, and at each step is diagonalized. So how this would look like is that in the first step, you only would have alpha one, then in the second step, you would have a two by two matrix, in the third step, three by three, and so on. And basically, at each step, you diagonalize and you look at the convergence of the lowest eigenvalue. And when the lowest eigenvalue converges, actually, that lowest eigenvalue of the M matrix is a very, very good approximation of the original A matrix, which is in our case the Hessian. And then to generate from this the, um, the lowest eigenvector of the Hessian matrix, you take the, um, the eigenvector corresponding to this lowest eigenvalue of the M matrix, and you multiply it with a, with a matrix V, that is a matrix composed by all the vectors that were used in the Lanchus procedure. And this gives you X, which is the lowest eigenvector of the A matrix. So this would be the eigenvector of the Hessian in our case. Uh, for more details, uh, I suggest you check these two articles that are referenced on the bottom. So in practice, how this looks in the plugin is that um, you receive the, we receive the forces corresponding to current positions. And then we need to calculate the last, next line choose vector, so dr i plus 1. And when this is calculated, we go to the bottom, we transform the dr i plus 1 into a force. And so the plugin returns a force corresponding to the desired move. Everything else that happens in the between is basically the line choose algorithm, which I outlined in the previous slide. So during the calculating the next Lanchus vector, we store the needed factors alpha and beta for the M matrix, which is then diagonalized with the current size, I plus one times I plus one, where I is the index of the current step. For this diagonalization, we use LAPAC. Um, and then based on the result of the lowest eigenvalue of this diagonalization, if it's converged, then the output vector is going to be X, so the eigenvector of the Hessian matrix. And if not, it's going to be the just the next uh, Lanchos vector, so V i plus one. And here you see also this factor that is uh, boxed in orange, which is just the sum, the negative sum of all the vectors that were pre previously used. Um, and this is to ensure that each next Lanchos move has its origin in the starting point of the Lanchos algorithm. Uh, and then based on the result of the of the algorithm, we change internal flags. So if it's converged already or not, and yeah, then this uh, output vector is transformed into a force and returned force corresponding to the move. So the question that naturally arises is how many steps do we need to converge the eigenvalue? Um, the original RTN implementation basically used a fixed number of Lancho steps, namely 15 which was justified in the reference number one, which you see on the bottom. It was done in, um, in a system with 1,025 atoms, where they established that in 15 steps, you get a good enough convergence of the eigenvalue and of the eigenvector. Uh, it, is all, it is known higher theoretically that the um, average relative error of the Lanchos algorithm is bounded by this factor, uh, 0 0.1 ln, blah, blah where n is the number of atoms. So 3n is, is the dimension of the, of the Hessian matrix, and m is the number of iterations. So I've plotted this, um, this factor on the bottom right for n equal 1,025 and for n around 250. And we see that at 15 steps, we are indeed converged between 2 and 3%. So yes, this is justified. The m equal 15 is a good uh, number of steps. But however, the algorithm is iterative. So it means there could be convergence already on earlier steps. So for example, it could already be converged at step number 10. And since each iteration is essentially an evaluation of the force, we would like to be able to save as many force calculations as possible. So to stop the algorithm already when we are converged. 
This is the reason we have set up the, the convergence criterion. And essentially due to a trick that was already implemented in the original art implementation, which is the reuse of the previous eigenvector, which means you use the result of the previous instance of the Lanchos call, the, the eigenvector of that instance of that Lanchos call as an input vector to the next Lanchos call, which essentially means you already start with a very good guess for the eigenvector. And then generally you just need to modify it a little bit and you can converge very fast in this Lanchos iteration. Uh, for example, in the, when we are close to the saddle point, this can happen in two or three steps we already converged. So like this, we, we, can, we reduce a lot the number of force evaluations. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay, this is it from my side. Now uh, Matiz will come. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hi everybody. Um, I'll just briefly uh, present uh, how uh, ART, the plugin, is currently interfaced with the Quantum Espresso, so with the PWX of Quantum Espresso. And as Leila already mentioned, this is done uh, through basically hijacking the relaxed calculation, where I, which I briefly out outlined here. So it basically consists of uh, calculate, calculate total energy and forces. We check the convergence, and if, if we're not yet converged on energy and forces, we displace the atom with a minimization algorithm. And the idea behind the plugin is to basically uh, shown on the right, so to place it in between the uh, calculate forces and check convergence uh, calls. So we modify the force so that the atoms are displaced uh, according to what we want and not according to the minimizations uh, we are looking for. Um, so essentially, uh, the plugin takes as input uh, just the number of uh, atoms in the system. It takes in the force because we need it to monitor uh, where we are and uh, also if we're converging to the saddle point or not. And uh, because currently we're using the fire relaxation minimization, uh, we also need access to the fire variables such as delta T, the velocity and the alpha factor. Uh, in addition to this, to prevent too, too quick convergence, so if we give it a too small force, the, uh, the engine might think it converged to a uh, minimum because in the fall this is a uh, relaxation. So we also take the convergence threshold and uh, lower, lower it uh, so that we don't reach convergence too soon. In addition to this, we also need, uh, so if the user fixes some atoms in the relaxation, we need uh, this as input as well as we read some data about the structure of the system so that we can write basically the structure of the output, so the atomic positions and uh, the corresponding uh, eigenvector. Uh, so we basically just write the initial position, the uh, saddle point when it's reached, reached and the final minimum. So this is why we need the structure. Uh, in addition to this, uh, so we, the few technical things that it needs is the access to the parallelization uh, info because it only runs on one uh, uh, node, so it's not parallelized. And also we need to know the path of the current directory in general uh, so that uh, uh, it's portable to many other systems. So what it puts out is basically forces which are put in quotation marks here, which are not the right forces. There are forces modified so that the move corresponds to the art algorithm. And uh, we also change some uh, fire variables and parameters according to the current step in, in the algorithm uh, we're in. And I already said that we just lowered the convergence threshold a little bit uh, to prevent uh, the code from thinking from the engine uh, to stop, basically, yes. Uh, sorry, so, uh, sorry. Yeah. can you just please accelerate and conclude because the time okay. is normally yeah, popular. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, so so uh, these are just uh, technicalities. We just have one call uh, to the uh, basically uh, to the art subroutine, which is compiled as a library, and uh, this is plugged in into the kind of like a plugin external force, which is an empty subroutine in Quantum Espresso. Uh, we change the forces according to uh, so the fire parameters according to the mush uh, move. Uh, so if we have a push and launch us, we uh, plug in the delta R to this formula. Otherwise, if we're doing just the perpendicular relaxation, we basically just take out the parallel uh, forces to the push or the eigenvector and uh, uh, use the typical fire parameters. So uh, we just to show a few examples, we tried a few reactions and compared them to NEB. 
So these are very simple uh, examples. We're working on better examples as we go. Uh, and uh, you can see that basically it sometimes it's uh, slower, sometimes it's faster than them. Uh, there are some specifics of how to set up the calculation, but as a proof of concept, we obtain as the same subtle po points as uh, net calculations. So uh, I guess back to Leo. See, and uh, sorry, so if uh, you think that this could be of interest for the Abinit community, we are more than available to, to work uh, with you for the, for the port porting. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So we have made it in meantime just for one question. Anybody? Yeah, in the chat, uh, Grigori. Yeah, Xavier, just ask your uh, question. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -bam. Okay. So Eric, maybe Eric wants to know how this algorithm behaves in the presence of multiple possible minima along the path. So in uh, in reality, what it is very good. It is very good. Okay. If you start from one minima, you start the pushing. Then you start the evaluation of the lag source. You follow the eigenvector with all the perpendicular relaxation, and then you push, and then you can restart and you continue. And it, it's, it's, it, it allows an easy integration in this kind of high throughput like mentality because you can do, if you don't know anything about your system, you, you can uh, just uh, set up um, several parallel calculation in which you, you first guess a random direction and then you can explore the test like that. So it okay. is uh, step by step. So there is no problem to do this kind of, uh, okay. of way. Okay. 